Welcome to D1 Ticker. I'm Matt Banker, and I'm pleased to be joined by Tara Archibald, who's the head coach at EIU for softball. Great to see you, Tara. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks for the opportunity. We are down here in Louisville at the Softball Coaches Convention, and first I wanted to ask you, as the season's only a few weeks away, What's the outlook for Eastern Illinois' team coming in 2024? Yeah, we're pretty excited for season. We're coming off a historic season last year and, you know, some of the best success in school history and returning a lot of our key pieces. And so we're, we're really excited and ready to get going in February. Now, uh, it's just a few weeks away. And, and, of course, some of the early season tournaments, opportunities to play non-conference uh, opponents to kind of build toward the, the conference schedule. I'm kind of curious, any strategy – as to how you approach non-conference scheduling around softball? You know, I think for our program and our group, I just try to prepare us to be in the best position we can be to win the OVC tournament at the end of the year. So whether that's seeing certain types of pitching this year, actually playing on turf fields because our conference tournament's going to be on turf. So strategically, you know, making sure we play on some venues with turf um, and then playing competition that it I feel like will prepare us to be ready to to win that OVC tournament in May. So there has been a series of playing rule changes in, in softball that people are kind of interested to see. How is this going to play out? What stands out to you uh, from a playing rule change that you're really curious about or that you're paying a lot of attention to? Man, there's so many. <laughs> I was at the uh, OJ and obstruction meeting this morning and you couldn't fit it all in the time limit that they gave. But um, I think the pitch clock is going to be huge, like just getting used to that piece of it. Obviously, the one way um, communication and figuring out how to use all that. And then you got pitchers can leap now. So that's a whole different element to the game. So there's a lot. It's a I feel like from a rules change standpoint this year, there's just a lot to take in. And it's just, we'll, we'll figure it out really quick. It always does. It seems overwhelming at first, but then it all just goes. And I think they're all, for the most part, really going to make the game better. It's just going to take some adjustment. Are you going to spend more time in the preseason around some of these changes in terms of how you, you do your practice planning? No doubt, right? Like I was just thinking this morning, like we got to get the clocks out in January and, and, and use them in scrimmages and try to make our players as comfortable as we can with that so that hopefully in February it's not too big of an adjustment. So we're, we're, we're as we mentioned earlier, here at the Softball Coaches Convention, early December, we're between two shutdown periods for the recruiting calendar, something that's also new to softball. I'm curious. Is that being well received? What's your thought on the, the adjustment to the recruiting calendar? I don't know how the shutdown period was received among the community. I'll tell you, I personally didn't love it. Um, just from the stance of like, if I wanted to be able to text a recruit on Thanksgiving and tell them happy Thanksgiving, I, I just am that kind of a relational coach that I enjoy being able to do that. But I understand the why, right, of, of trying to get us to shut down for a little bit and take some time to be with family and friends. So I think there's a positive to that as well. And again, we'll all get used to it and it'll keep going. It's just different and we're all trying to figure it out. Are there any other changes you would like to see to the calendar? My biggest thing with the recruiting calendar, I was a three sport athlete growing up. I love to recruit three sport athletes. And I feel like with our recruiting the way it is right now, it's really hard for athletes to be three sport athletes. Mm -hmm. So whether that's that we limit playing in the fall, play less, some people are saying not play at all in the fall with travel. Um, I just wish we could find times for the athletes to maybe play less softball, practice a little bit more, and then go play volleyball or go play basketball. Um, I think that would be great for their overall health and the athleticism of our athletes. Um, but again, I don't know how close we are to making that happen. Sure. No, interesting insight. I, I also, on the recruiting side of things, want to ask uh, from – the softball lens about how the transfer portal, even though softball's had the one-time transfer exception and those things, how has the sort of optics and mobility and the, the sort of view of transfer portal impacted softball in particular? I mean, I think it's been impacting softball for a while now, right? I think other people in our athletic department are starting to like panic right in the last year or so, and I think we've dealt with it for uh, several years. Um, I mean, I can find good and bad both ways, mm -hmm. right? I, I kind of take the path of like, it's here. So let's find out how to help, how to use it to help our program and our athletes. Um, I can tell you there have been plenty of players who transferred into my program and they would tell you like, it was the best thing that ever happened and it was good for them, right? And gave them a completely different student athlete experience. And so I see the positive 
from that side of it for a player to be able to find their culture and find their home in the place where they feel really, really comfortable. Um, and then, yeah, there's some like thinking the grass is greener on the other side, so I better go find out where that is and then realizing quickly that that's not the case. And um, you hate to see that happen too. So there's positive and negative to it. I don't have the solutions, but I can tell you that I've seen it. I've seen it be very beneficial to athletes in our program too. So. Sure, absolutely. It's two-way street, sure. right? You know, yeah. can, can help a program and, and sometimes change and transfer is appropriate um, depending on the situation. I also want to get your thought about the transfer windows. There's been adjustments to those and how long they are, when they are. Do you like where that ended up? I think I like the timing of it. Right. I think the timing of it's right. How long they are. I don't know. I don't know if there's a science to that or from that. It seems like kids are going in as soon as they open. So I think they're, you know, how long it lasts maybe doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. um, but I think the timing of it is good in the sense that at least it gets you through the season and you're not dealing with it maybe right smack in the middle of the season and um, dealing with the chemistry piece that that might open up. I, I, I think it seemed to work so far. Yeah. Sure. One of the things, obviously, EIU being a member of the Ohio Valley Conference, the OVC, conference realignment has cascaded sure. all in all directions, um, all divisions, you know, not just at high FBS level, et cetera. College sports has really walked and lived this the last 10 years, including in your league. How has that impacted softball in particular? Softball's changing dramatically, especially in the Power Five conferences, right? And and how that's shaking out. But at our level, like the conference realignment, it's different because I know for us, like we're playing completely different teams, right? Like the preparation for last season mm -hmm. was like facing almost a whole new conference because whether it were new teams coming in and and new coaches coming in, um, it was just a different, felt like a completely different conference. Um, however, I think the OVC did a really good job, especially from a softball standpoint, because our our um, conference is within an area of, like our student athlete experience is incredible because the travel is fantastic. I think everywhere for us is within two to five hours. And so I think that part, like the footprint of our conference, man, they did a really good job from a softball standpoint. But it's going to continue to change. Um, I, I don't think we're anywhere close to being done and, and how that affects mid-majors moving forward, I think is still very much up in the air. And again, we can't really control it. So it's like we just have to adjust and compete with the best of what we have with it. But um, I will say like from a softball coach in the OVC, I'm pretty happy with how our realignment worked out because I think that our, our uh, footprint of the conference has been great for our student athletes. You have those shorter bus trips. It's much more manageable, budgetary Stay friendly. Stay in class another day. Yep. And, and you know, you're not missing, to me as a coach, like I highly um, regard the academic side of things and I have students who do too. And so, man, when we can leave Friday after school and never have to miss class, like during conference season, that's that's a big deal to our student athletes' life, so. Yeah, yeah that's a great insight. I want to ask you, uh, again, from the softball and, and just your experience as a coach with the recent news of the NCAA really kind of walking up to maybe creating a new division and or subdivision and the NCAA president putting out a memo that's kept caught a lot of interest and buzz around college athletics. What are your thoughts around kind of what is out there, what for the sport and the best interest and sustainability of softball, the, what would college leaders need to hear from you, Congress need to hear from the coaches who, are, who see this and live this every single day? I think softball is in the best place it's ever been right now. I think people love our sport. People who never have experienced softball before, like I'll, I'll be, in the grocery store, right? And somebody finds out I'm a softball coach and they're like, oh my goodness, I saw it on TV yesterday and just couldn't stop watching it, right? And so I think we have the potential right now to grow our sport more than ever. And I think our sport could serve universities and the NCAA more than ever, right? I think we have the potential from a business side to be a really good product. Um, and so I just hope we make the decisions that allow the sport to compete at the highest level and the athletes to have the opportunity to compete at the highest level um, and, and get to showcase their skills because the talent and the product that we have in our sport right now is, is pretty special, I think. So. Are there any lessons learned? That's a great point, too, just in terms of, you know, fan interest, growing the sport. And, and at the championship at Oklahoma City, like, the crowds are incredible. It looks like an amazing experience. 
what are schools trying to kind of draw or even in EIU's specific experience to say, hey, we can replicate that maybe at a different scale uh, locally during the regular season? Are there things there from a marketing and promotion of the sport that you're looking at? I think it's, I think what sells in our sport is one, it's fast, right? It's, it's fast paced. And I think that's part of where like the pitch clock and things come in is like keeping it fast paced. But I think the other thing that sells is our athletes, right? Like our athletes are incredible athletes, but they're also really great people. And the average fan really relates to our female athletes. And so if you can get your athletes out in the community and get the community to to be around your athletes and then realize, oh my goodness, they're great humans, but wow, they're incredible athletes. I think that part sells itself really well too. And, and that's what people kind of tend to buy into. I think like when you're watching the World Series, you're hearing all those stories, right, on TV and, and getting to meet these young women. Um, but then to see them go out and be incredible athletes um, on top of that, it just draws fans in. And so I think it's just getting them out in the community, getting them involved and getting the community to the field to see it because a lot of people have never seen a softball game, but then when they do, they're hooked. Um, so it's just uh, creating that awareness. That's, that's great and great finishing thought, keeping the focus on student athletes could also lead to NIL opportunities and the community engagement, all those uh, coming down the same road. Tara Archibald, best of luck to EIU softball this spring. Thanks for your time. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it.